last year, uh, the correction lasted also two months from uh, mid-August to uh, mid-October. So we could expect the uh, correction phase to last until mid-October mid this time. Hello Bruno, uh, it's always Hello, a pleasure Jack. to have you here in our studio. It's been a month now since we last saw you, but uh, not too long to wait until the one after this, just uh, another two week uh, stop. So l last time when you were here a month ago, you, you warned of an imminent top for the S&P. Um, how long will this correction last, do you think? Well, uh, you see uh, that four weeks ago, uh, we were about uh, that level, 24, uh, 85, 90. And uh, now we had, had two things going on. First of all, the price, of course, went down uh, two weeks in a row, broke the short-term support trend. Also, the VIX increased, uh, which what we expect uh, when we have the beginning of the correction. And the momentum turned down. In terms of timing, uh, last year, uh, the correction lasted also two months from uh, mid-August to uh, mid-October. So we could expect the correction phase to last until mid-October mid this time. But in the short term, we have a rebound. How, how long do you expect this rebound to last? Well, uh, you see what we've got here on the daily chart of the S&P is the correction in, in two legs, reaching the clouds, this uh, green area, and then a rebound. The rebound probably is going to be uh, capped by this uh, resistance trend line around uh, 2460. And it is true that given the uh, oversold uh, stochastic momentum indicator, uh, the trading range between 2460 and 2410 can last a few days. But uh, as we are in a correction phase, uh, sometimes we are going to break uh, down uh, below this uh, cloud, uh, below 24. 100 and in direction of 23.50. Okay, so moving on, let's look at US bonds and gold. What's been happening there over the past few weeks? Well, uh, it has been confirming basically that it was a correction. Uh, during uh, the correction phase in, here in black, the S&P, <coughs> you had a rise in, in gold. Usually when uh, uncertainty increase, a little bit uh, gold is bid. And uh, also in the last phase of uh, the correction, second down leg, you also had bonds being favored, that means a yield coming down uh, a, a bit. Now uh, we are close for both to, to key levels. For gold, it is 1300, uh, but it has been pulling back down as the S&P rebounded in the last two days. <coughs> Same thing for uh, the yield as uh, from uh, 2116, it rebounds a little bit. It probably be, uh, be kept by the clouds here. Uh, until uh, the correction is over. So from a US perspective, what, what effect has this S&P correction had? Well, uh, what we can see that in the, in the US, really, uh, it was a classic correction. Uh, if we look at the sectors, if we take the ratio of discretionary versus S&P uh, staples, what we've got here is a decline. That means that defensive were outperforming uh, cyclicals. Now, uh, the the momentum is oversold, uh, there is a little rebound, so uh, that corresponds also to the rebound in the S&P. So uh, moving over to look at Europe, it seems that Europe wasn't really affected as much by this correction. Do, do you expect this to, to continue? This is a good question because, as you know, uh, usually Euro, uh, Europe or, or the Euro stock tend to underperform uh, the S&P 500 during a correction, and that's not what has been happening in the last four weeks. Uh, after a long decline of the relative strength, uh, the relative strength of Europe versus the S&P 500 has been bottoming. So uh, that means that people were more expecting a correction in the US market than in Europe. They think it is probably uh, less uh, expensive in Europe and they tend to remain therefore in, in the trading range. Uh, the price pattern is not so clear that uh, there is uh, would be no risk at all to break uh, the downside. I think uh, after a rebound that we've got uh, similarly to the S&P, the, the risk will be to, to break uh, the support around 3,400 and, and go down to uh, 3,300. So let's, uh, let's look at emerging markets. Now there seem to be a, a safer option at the moment. Will yeah, it continue yeah, to just, be this way? Just before the emerging, maybe we can, what we can notice is Japan. Yeah, let's look ja at Japan. Japan has been, a bit weaker than Europe, with a relative strength a bit down. However, Japan was a special case. You see, uh, the trading range was so small that really the decline through it uh, is not a lot in terms of price actions. Now, as we can notice here, 19,400 
This is a kind of a last support that we've got here in May. And if we cannot rebound on it, uh, there is not much support until all the way to 18,200. But your momentum is already oversold and probably uh, the Nikkei will do as a Europe and as a US rebounds a little. Sorry to, to forget Japan there. <laughs> Sorry, Japan. Um, let's now look at emerging markets and um, they seem to be quite a safe bet at the moment. Will it, will it continue to be like this? Well, we, we need to differentiate a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, it's surprising that uh, more risky market uh, seems to be better performing or outperforming the S&P 500. Uh, this outperformance of the India versus the S&P 500 has basically lasted until August, and now it was the leader market. Uh, there was some profit taking, the relative strength has been weakening a little bit. And the price action is really close to, to rising trend support. So here, it's not so clear that uh, it will be absolutely safe. However, if you look at China, what you notice there is, is really a rotation between the emerging market and, and relative strength of China versus S&P and versus emerging market is rising. So here, uh, with this price action close to the former top, it's not impossible with rising momentum that uh, we do higher highs. And also we see uh, Brazil, which was uh, this kind of market which nobody wanted to see after the political turmoil here in May. Uh, has been rising very steadily and the relative strength has been rising too. Short term, notice this uh, doji uh, pattern with a spike, it's probably reaching a resistance, uh, so we might enter in a pause uh, really. And so, so for you then, what's the key market to, to be looking out for? Well, we have to go back to, to the US and, and basically look at technology or the NASDAQ index. Uh, what we've got here is since the beginning of August, a correction not a very deep correction. We see that this correction is above the cloud. Uh, if the rebound is capped by the former highs near 59.50, then that means that because the correction time lasts until October, we have more chance to break down below uh, the clouds, below 57.50 uh, towards maybe uh, 5,500 or 5,400. Bruno, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching. And as I said at the beginning, Bruno will be back in two weeks. So see you then.